you know, honestly, some of the cribs that were the most expensive, they have all these gadgets on them. Some of them didn't even work very good, uh, but they're very expensive. And so we're going to be able to do or propose a permanent exemption on sales tax for all cribs and strollers. And so that's going to help families be able to afford. We're also going to do a, a full year sales tax exemption for children's books. We want to do a full year sales tax exemption uh, for children's toys up to up to 12 years old. Uh, we also want to do a full year uh, sales tax exemption on all household items, $25 or less. And so the things you lose around your house, under 25, tax free. And that's each individual item. So if you buy $500 worth of stuff, every single thing that's under 25 is tax-free. So that could be pretty significant uh, for folks, particularly people that have to have, you know, that have big families and they gotta they gotta look after the household. We're doing one-year sales tax exemption uh, for all athletic equipment for for under 18. And so little league, we're in T-ball, all this stuff that'll be tax exempt, and we're happy with that. And as much as we understand how important it is for families raising children, uh, we also understand that for a lot of families, uh, it's not just uh, the children that they look after, it's also their pets that they look after. And so we are going to be able to do and propose a one-year sales tax exemption on all pet food, and that's going to make a big difference. We're also going to propose a permanent sales tax exemption uh, for over-the-counter pet medications. And right now, uh, similar to like humans, if you get prescribed something for your pet, that is not taxable. But if it's simply something you get over-the-counter, you're paying sales tax on that. And so we want to make sure that that is tax-exempt, just like the prescription medications are. So that, I think, will make a big difference for folks. And just like the strollers and everything with babies and how expensive, you know, pets are expensive, too. Too. There's just a lot that goes into it, and so if we can lessen that burden, I think that's really, really good. Uh, we're also going to expand our back-to-school sales tax holidays, and so we've always done one, but this, this time we're going to do a total of four weeks. We're going to do two leading into the fall semester, and then two for the spring semester as well, and so that'll give families more bites at the apple. We also want to propose a permanent exemption of sales tax on all medical supplies and equipment. Uh, we saw with COVID, people needing to buy things, uh, that should be tax free. And then all the tax holidays we did this year, fiscal year, we want to reestablish those. And so there's things like the, the outdoor tax uh, break where you buy the outdoor stuff. I think we call it the Freedom Week. Uh, we had other things that I think are really, really good. So this is the most robust package. This is $1.1 billion, just what I announced here. Then you look at the toll relief, which is between 400 and $500 million, and we're not done yet. We're actually going to do more proposals, and so stay tuned for that. And I would also point uh, folks to, with, and I supported with the legislature, uh, putting some of these initiatives on the ballot uh, for some property tax relief for our first responders and nurses and teachers. So that is going to be there, and I think it will likely pass. So this is really, really good to say in the state of Florida, we respect you as taxpayers, and we're going to work to lessen the burden on you, and we're going to make sure we run our ship in a really tight fashion. And obviously, when you have the biggest budget surplus in history of the state by far, you know that you're doing that. And so let's return some of that. Now, look. We have the biggest rainy day fund we've ever had. I think it's like $3.2 billion now. It was $1.5 billion when I became governor, and that's important. I also think just because of what we're dealing with with the Biden economy, as bad as the inflation has been and as much as energy has cost people, the Fed is keeping to raise interest rates. And that, I think, is going to continue to put a drag on the economy. Florida will do better than the average state in the country because we've got a lot of stuff going on. But you can't be immune to this. 
this. You know, we're a national economy as well. So I'm concerned about some of the turmoil that's yet to come. And I hope that that doesn't come to pass, but I don't think you can look at what's going on in Washington and think that somehow we're going to come out of this uh, as a country uh, without seeing any more economic turmoil. And so because we have such a big surplus, not only do we have the budget stabilization, our rainy day fund, you know, we're going to have billions and billions of dollars that we can set aside for additional if we have economic turmoil because of the Biden policies. And so I think when you talk about infrastructure, education, natural environment, all the great things that we've been able to do, and I think we've done record. We did record school funding, largest teacher pay increase in Florida history. We did record funding for our natural resources and our environment, record Department of Transportation work program budget. So we're doing all those things, but we're also going to have not just the budget stabilization, we're going to have other money that if you have issues, if there's more dislocation, if there's more turmoil, uh, all those other things, we're going to keep going. Just move some money from the, from the kitty and put it in, and we're not going to miss a beat on any of that stuff. And so we're really positioned well. Uh, we feel like we're positioned really good. And so we can do this tax relief really without breaking a sweat at this point. So we're going to do it, and we're going to deliver for the uh, people of this state more than we ever have before. All right, I want to hear...